Dance Game anymore. I'm a cellist with the Allen Philharmonic. Um, this is the third video of this, of this set, and uh, I was asked to just do a general uh, discussion on uh, tone production and then uh, bow arm mechanics. This is an incredibly deep uh, topic. It's something that I've had many, many lessons on when I was learning and spent uh, years, actually, um, working on improving tone um, and working on so So this is not something you master in a short amount of time. Um, however, um, even when you get started uh, learning your instrument, there's some things you want to pay attention to. But I, I would just caution you, don't expect it to happen overnight uh, where you just suddenly sound like a professional recording. Um, it does take uh, years. Um, and typically, uh, teaching students, you know, it's, it's not until uh, they've had a couple of years, two, three years, um, before we start really getting a wonderful, beautiful sound out of the instrument. So it does come if you feel like you're, you're sounding like a goose at first, um, that is common. Um, so keep working on it um, as, as, you, as you practice. Uh, pay attention to how you sound. Uh, and maybe, maybe you'll advance faster than that. It's, it's possible. So um, when we talk about um, tone, there's, there's three things that, that are kind of like the hallmarks or the big points that, that usually come up in the mechanics when we're working with uh, younger students. So um, that is uh, bow weight, bow speed, and bow placement on the string. So, um, and this, this kind of, if you think about it, I don't know if you've done your geometry uh, classes or, or dealt with a, a Cartesian plane of some kind, but you have a, an x-axis, a y-axis, you know, like coordinates, and then a z-axis if it was in three dimensions. And all these correspond to that. So it makes a lot of sense that we have three dimensions that we live in, and uh, then we have uh, three physical dimensions uh, for, for uh, setting that as weight, speed, and placement. So if I'm thinking about that, you know, weight could be kind of like our, our z-axis. That's going in, in depth. Um, and then placement is our y-axis, up and down. And then uh, speed is our x-axis. So um, I'm a little mathematically minded, I think, this way. Um, so... Another good analogy for this is uh, the color spectrum. You have you know, red, blue, and yellow, and from those uh, three combinations, we get all the colors that we see. So that is how deep and involved tone can be. But here's a few uh, general pointers as you get started. Um, uh, if you hear a scratchy noise, I don't sound like that all the time, this is on purpose, um, you need to move the bow faster, or you need to use um, a little less weight, so to make the sound a little more airy. So in general, when you hear that thick, scratchy sound, uh, you need to move the bow more. Um, then uh, if it's real airy and breathy sounding, where it lacks um, cohesion to the sound, um, you need to use more weight. And then uh, on the issue of placement, um, it's complex, but uh, in this area that we play between, between the fingerboard and the bridge, um, uh, most of the playing is done here. There's a few exceptions. Um, the, the string has a different amount of tension. So if you, if you look close to the bridge, it's very, very stiff. And closer to the fingerboard, it's, it's more flexible. Um, if you need to play louder, in general, you're going to move closer to the bridge. So, again, maybe a little difficult to see. If I'm playing really loud, I'm going to be close to the bridge of support. If I'm playing very soft, again, it might be a little difficult to see. I'm right at the edge of the fingerboard. And that is um, the area or zone on the string, vertically, that's going to support uh, those sounds. So, um, the next thing is um, finding the right combination of all those, that weight, speed, placement. They get to you the sound that you want. Um, always look at the music, see what the dynamic marking is. Um, you know, you'll have, you may not have learned yet, but piano, mezzo piano, mezzo forte, forte. You get some good in information from the page. And then uh, once you know uh, what uh, dynamic you want to play, try to think of like maybe different lanes on the string, like. Uh, one, two, three, four for each of those dynamics, and you're going to move a little closer to the bridge as you get louder. 
Um, if you want the sound to be very open and resonant, we're going to you know, see me doing this sort of thing. What's natural to go with that is that we're going to be using more bow. And if you want the sound to be a little more uh, focused and pointed, and you see I'm, I'm doing this, that's, that's going to be a little less bow. So uh, these, these combinations uh, give us a wide variety of sounds that we can make. And um, I just want you to remember when you hear a sound you don't like, that's coming out of your instrument, one of those three things needs to change. Again, bow weight, bow speed, and bow placement. So the last thing, we just talked a little bit about the bow arm. I want to say, um, in general, um, when you set the bow on the string, I'm trying to get up close here um, uh, so you can see, but it distorts it a little bit. We should be making, uh, you know, a perfect, uh, uh, like, plus sign or T or something. It should be all right angles um, when we're setting the bow on the string. Um, unfortunately for you as a player, you can't really see that from the angle you're sitting. We're sitting way up here, and we've got this weird angle that we're looking down. So in general, when you're playing, if your bow is staying in the same place on the string and not sliding up or down, your bow is probably uh, straight. So that is a good little technique for us as cellists to be able to, to, to tell if our bow is straight because it's very hard to see. Um, then, as much as possible, try to maintain the same constant weight um, through the, throughout the bow stroke. So we're just going to pull, and my arm is delivering the same weight and the same bow speed. And then when I change direction, I do exactly the same thing. And if you're new to this, it's not as easy to do what I'm showing you, but it's, it's very true that if you give exactly the same inputs, same bow speed, same weight, same placement, you're going to get the same sound out of the instrument. It's not a mystery. It is uh, the result of what you're putting into it. So um, putting all that together, again, takes a lot of work. Um, I, I really recommend if you're, you know, once things get better, if you're able to get uh, lessons um, with someone individually, they'll be able to tell you, oh, you know, if you hear that, Scratchiness, you need to you know, use more bow or, or lighten up on the weight. They'll be able to tell you specifically in each situation what to do. And then after you get some experience, you'll start to be able to do that on your own. So um, I, want, I want everyone who plays to be making wonderful sound. And, uh, and tone production is, is what we focus on in many, many uh, lessons over a long period of time. So um, again, as you get started, good luck. Uh, practice a lot.